All right, boys and girls, here we are. Getting ready to do a 1964 D roll. See, we've got a few people in the house. Paula, Coin Junkie. Can everybody hear me just fine? Check, check, check. One, two. All right. So we've got uh, visibility. We've got hearability. Now we need to get coinability. I have 51. 51. Hey, Coin Dragon. 51 tags here. 50 of the 51 have names on them. The 51st tag is this little guy right here. And when we get this little guy, the wrapper for this roll will go to the person who was drawn just before I draw that little tag. The reason just before? Well, because if I draw it first, I throw it back in. If I draw it last and we're going to do the person after, how could I do that? So here we are. Jeff Dunn. How are you doing, buddy? We've got five different people on this roll, and each of them have ten coins. So there's not going to be a whole lot of variety in people here. I keep forgetting to grab my bag beforehand, and it's sitting on the floor next to me. So I've got my bag. I'm going to probably have Amber make me a bag for drawing on coin reveals because it looks like this is going to be a regular thing. So let me pour my 51 chips into the bag. That's all of them. 51. And we'll get to the roll. This is a 1964D roll. It's an original wrapped roll. Fed Reserve Bank of Kansas City. Yep, as I thought, this thing is going to be a little difficult on me to open. These things are always really hard to pick apart when they are original like this. This is actually an idea that I had many years ago. I just didn't have any way of carrying it out. Let's see if I could do a little bit better from this end. This end looks like it's going to open pretty well. Sometimes these ends, they don't, they don't fold under and seal up exactly the way that they had planned. But you know what? They weren't doing this for security purposes. They were doing it to hold coins into paper. And so if the coins were held in the paper, that's all they really cared. They didn't care how tight they were. They didn't care about anything else, really. Ah, come on. Well, it's been really difficult on me here. I don't want to stick any kind of instrument in there other than my thumbnail because I don't want to scratch any coins. I've not really looked at the end coins on this to see whether there's toning or anything to that effect. I've, I've really actually scarcely even looked at the roll to tell you the absolute truth. I happen to have my loop next to me right now. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off. And take these and put them out and get them out of the way. I'm going to pull the wrapper off. And we have a wrapper and presumably 50 coins from an original roll. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and drag out one chip for the first person to get a coin, Mr. Adams. Let's see what Mr. Adams gets. Stick it under my trusty scope. This is the roll end coin doesn't look like it's all that toned so these were well stored well there is a spot on there that that's a waxy substance that'll come off the coin yep, nothing I can see on the obverse let's take a look on the reverse these are known to have double die reverses there are 20 some odd of them listed at least I'm not seeing anything on this particular coin though. So, let's put this one away. Put Mr. Adams' name in with it and move on. Coin number two.
Hello, Hawkeye. DN. I finally got the proper pronunciation of this name because he was nice enough to send me a short video of him pronouncing his name. His name is pronounced Patat. Patat. Steve Patat gets coin number two in the roll. Let's see what's on coin number two. Uh, looks like there's a little spot under the D, but nothing else on the mint mark area. Not seeing anything over there. I did readjust my light just a little bit so that the shine of the bulbs is a little bit out of the way. Makes things a little bit easier to see. Flip it over and take a look at the reverse. Not seeing anything on the reverse either. So that's 0 for 2. Let's take a look at coin number 3. Coin number 3 will belong to Mr. Adams. I think we're going to be doing a lot of back and forth between people. Hey, there's an RPM, isn't it? Yes. That is an RPM. Let's take a really close look at it. This is going to be one of the listed RPMs. I don't happen to have a list out right now. Somebody else can probably look it up and let me know. But that's a north RPM right there. So there's our first RPM of the roll. It is a nice D over D north. And this one belongs to Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams, I don't think, is around to watch. But that's a pretty nice one. I like that. That gives us that nice, warm, fuzzy feeling that we have an original roll going on here. Because I had no idea that was in there. I'm looking for doubled eyelid, looking for doubled ear, looking for doubling under the L of Liberty. I'm looking for doubling on the four of the date. I'm looking for repunch mint mark. I'm looking for class two doubling. That's going to be separation lines toward the rim on the reverse. There's a strip through grease thing almost taking away the initials. All right, there we go. We have a nice repunch mint mark from Mr. Adams. And I'm going to set this one aside because I know what that repunch mint mark looks like. Hello, Wild Bill. Next coin, number four, belongs to Mr. Adams. Well, let's see if we pull out two in a row. Not that die. And it looks like we have nothing on the mint mark for this one. Doesn't look like a double die of any kind. So we'll flip it over and see what's on the other side. Mr. Adams, there you are. You got to see your RPM come out of the roll. Let me get this a little bit better focused. I know my eyes are d definitely a little different from other people's, but cameras don't lie. When cameras are in focus, they're in focus. If you need better focus, you need glasses. But cameras are either in focus or they're out of focus. There's not a range. All right, well, there's a normal coin for Mr. Adams. So that's coin number four. Let's draw coin number five and see what happens. Coin number five belongs to Mr. Patat. Let's take a look at coin number five and see what we have. I'm going to start trying to pull some markers off of these so we can go a little faster as time goes on. We're looking at a... Uh, mm, it looks like a pretty heavy die scratch coming off the one of the date going northwest, but we'll try to find a better marker. So it doesn't appear there's a lot of markers on these dies. There's a spot on that coin right in the middle and under we. I'm not seeing anything special about this character. There is a little line coming out of the bottom of the one, but I think that's normal. 
let's see what else we've got going on. No doubling on the reverse. So, so far we have five coins drawn. We have one nice repunch mint mark out of the five coins that we've drawn. We'll keep hit, we'll keep hunting. And next in line will be, let me make sure I've only got one of these, Vicki Cardwell. Miss Cardwell gets a damage D. <laughs> well, that's kind of a bummer. At least it's not an RPM. And I'm not seeing hub doubling there either. We'll see more of them, Penny Parent. It was a nice uh, north RPM with a uh, modest spread. And the punch was, uh, oh, not the, not the best in the world, but it was definitely noticeable. Here it is real quick. It's in plastic. All right, uh, moving on to coin number seven. Coin number seven. Jeez, I got these things sticking together on me. I don't know why. Maybe it's the pen I'm using. Coin number seven belongs to Mr. Patat. Hey, I keep this where we can see it. Because I have used the video before to go back and see where I had made a mistake. And knowing exactly where I am all the time in the video and being able to see the number on the flip, which isn't going to happen very easily with this camera. I've got to change cameras. I've got to get a better camera. If somebody can tell me a good camera to use for the shot of my hands, let me know. Put it in the chat. I'd be glad to take a suggestion. I really don't know what I'm doing. So, anybody knows more than me. Is it, is it RPM number seven? Well, it was a darn good start, and it happens to be the only start we've got on this roll so far. I'm not seeing anything yet, other than the one RPM. And we will likely get more of those as we go along here. So if that's all we turn out with, well, Logitech 922. Is that a 1080 camera? Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn gets number eight. Coin number eight coming out of the row. No repunchment mark here. And no hub doubling. What about a, nope. No doubled eyelid, no doubled ear. I'm looking for one that gives me a good sharp picture. You can see the picture of my face is pretty sharp, but the picture down here is not sharp at all. And it's because the one on my face is a uh, HD 1080p Logitech camera, and the other one is a older, cheaper version, and I'm wanting to replace it. And I'm thinking I can probably replace it with one like the one that's on my face. And the one that's on my face, I think I paid, I don't know, maybe $40 for it. So you like yours, Paula. Vicki Cardwell, coin number nine. Wow, I haven't seen another one of those repunch mint marks yet. I haven't seen anything else yet either, but you guys will know that as with all the other rolls that I've done, I will be going through these coins again after the broadcast to take a look at them more closely to make sure that I didn't miss something because I have missed stuff in the past because I'm using a scope that I don't generally use for searching coins. I usually use my regular microscope. And it's taking some time for me to get used to the settings on this thing and exactly how to get it set up so that I can actually see everything. And I'm still not 100% there. 
Hello, Hector. All right, Copper Kingdom comes out with his first coin of the roll. Let's see what we get. Well, it's a relatively clean looking coin. It just doesn't happen to have any, uh, any doubling on the mint mark. Big old gash above his eye. It looks like he's been in a boxing match. Well, let me see what we have on the other side. I think we might have seen this die before. I'm noticing some die scratches running northwest to southeast up here in the upper part of the design I think I've seen before. Small lamb up by in. Let's see. And it is. Nice eye. I didn't really pick that out. It looks like a little lamb. Could also be a dice scrape. I'm going to take a. Well, crap. If I had my. I don't know what I did with my. My loop. Hang on just a second. It's like walking out of the house without your wallet. A true numismatist feels naked without their loop around their neck. All right, so let me take a good close look at this. It does appear to be damaged to the die. It is not a lamination. It appears to be a little bit of damage to the die. We'll see if we run across this again. We'll know for sure. All right. Queen numero 11 belongs to Mr. Patat. Hey, coin collector. Uh, we got one nice repunch mint mark so far. And we've only found one of them in the roll so far. But we are a whole 11 coins in right now. Hey, see, there we go. Die damage. There it is again. So, two coins in a row. It's got that uh, little feather thing next to the end. And there's the northwest to southeast die scratches that I had seen in the previous coin. So, this is the exact same die as coin number 10. And here we are with coin number 11. And put it away for Mr. Patat. Now somebody else has one with that little feather next to the end. Let's see whose coin is next. Copper Kingdom is the next coin. Well, let's see what we get here. Ooh, this one's got a few spots on it. Okay, I'm looking at the D mint mark to see if there's any split serifs. I'm looking at the 4 in the date to see if there's any doubling above or below the uh, crosslet. There's a little tiny bit of doubling above the crosslet, but I don't list those. And I look at the T's and trust to see if there's any little bits hanging out. I have a bug flying around in here. I don't know what, I, I guess it's a house fly maybe. I don't know. I look below the L of Liberty for any bars or anything like that sitting underneath the L. I look at the I to see if there's a doubled eyelid. I look at In God We Trust in general just to see if maybe there's any class 1 doubling. I haven't seen one before, but that doesn't mean there can't be one. As anybody knows who has been with me for a while on these roll hunts, you know that there are a lot of die varieties that have not been listed. And so you don't want to cut yourself short. Definitely don't want to cut yourself short. Look at everything. Know what's been listed. Know a little bit about, well, different eras are known for different things. Like uh, the mid to late 1930s are well known for, for uh, nice class 6 double die reverses. So if you're checking a roll from the 1930s, you might want to pay a little special attention to the reverses. Hey, Mr. Patat just got himself a nice RPM. 
Here's another one of those. I'm going to zoom it in because a lot of people have joined us since I found that last one. This is the second one of these out of a roll. Nice little north RPM there. And it actually looks like from both of them so far, it appears as though that there may be a small split in the lower serif. But this is a nice little RPM. I'm not 100% sure that I checked the rest of the coin for anything after I checked for that RPM. <laughs> Saw the RPM and I just kind of split running. I put a blindfold on it running a straight line. I don't know what is going on here. I'm focused on the reverse, but I'm focused on the obverse, but not focused on the reverse. That's a fiber laying on the coin. Nothing with the reverse of this one, but it does have a nice little RPM. So Mr. Patet just got himself a nice RPM. I got five people on this roll. I'm hoping that at least everyone gets one of these nice little RPMs. So far, Mr. Adams and Mr. Patet have both gotten one. All right. Copper Kingdom gets to the next coin. Let's see if this is one of them. No. And it's not. And again, all the things that I'm looking for. Oops, cancel that. I'm trying to get myself in a mood where I can actually see the into. Oh, there we go. That's much better. Now I can see everything I'm doing. I don't know why I keep hiding myself behind everything that I can't see. Now I need to focus again because I realize that I am out of focus. And let's look at the reverse on this coin. So, so far we found a nifty little flange looking thing next to the end of in, and it was damaged to the die because we have found two of them identical. And we found an RPM. Not sure yet which the RPM is. But it shouldn't be difficult to identify because, well, it's pretty nice. Especially for 1964D. Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams pops up again and gets another RPM. Look at that. That's the next coin in the row right there. So now that we know what we're looking for, we can see it pretty easily. Hello, Mr. Dowdle. I found out how to pronounce Mr. Patat's name. He sent me a video. Ooh, that's a... That's a cool little lamination going on right there. That is definitely a lamination. That's pretty neat. On the RPM. So it's an RPM with a lamination. This is a little dirt spot there. Hey, he sent me a video of himself pronouncing his name. Very much appreciated. Now I know how to say his name. All right, Mr. Adams gets his second example of this RPM. Let me pull another. Mr. Dunn. Let's see what we can do for Mr. Dunn. Oh. Okay, this one has a clash next to the one. So we can use that as a semi marker and then find something better to really draw the exclamation point on which die this is. So far, I'm not seeing anything. Not seeing anything to use as a marker. It weren't the cleanest dies when these coins were minted. Kind of got minted on a dirty day. Oh, what's that? Mm, nope. That's. I was thinking that line off the six was a die scratch, but it's not. Oh, there we go. We've got die scratches. I saw it. Gotta get it to come back up though. Yeah, right out there in front of the chin. 
Got a few little dice scratches right out there in front of the chin. So I can use that along with the clash. So those two will work together to show me that this die has been viewed before. And we look on the reverse. A bunch of die scratches. No doubling. Nothing else specific other than some die scratches. And that's coin number 16. Mr. Dunn. Point number 17, we'll go to Mr. Dunn. Let's see if we can do better this time. No, not with this one. I'm trying to get that focus in there. It's just irritating me. Okay, that's not the feather by the end. It's not the clash. So what is this one? Ah, here we go. Die scratches running southeast off the front of the head. You can see one in front of the nose. You can see one in front of the brow line. So I haven't seen specifically noticed, anyway, those lines yet. But now that I have... All I gotta do is tilt a coin like this, and if they're there, they're there, and if they're not, they're not. There's also one coming out and up from the nose. Right there. You see it right just above the tip of the nose. Alright, so we know what to use that and how to get that die recognized for the next coin that we find that belongs to it. We'll see if there's anything on the reverse here. Not seeing anything. So, oddly enough, this roll doesn't appear to have any double die reverses in it. And that's usually what pokes out in the 64D is a number of different minor double die reverses. <laughs> You've got detention hall. You're watching YouTube on Detention Hall. I guess that was something I could have done back in the day if there was such thing as YouTube. All right, so this is Copper Kingdom. And Copper Kingdom, we have the Clash. We have the little dice scratches out in front of the chin. So this is definitely the same die as we've seen before. I do that because, let's say, I get markers so that I can recognize a die. And I get it kind of early on in the roll. There's a little structure next to the F. And <clears throat> I start going through the roll, and I see this die, and I see it again, and I see it again. And then the next time I see it, I realize I've been skipping a doubled eyelid the entire time. So I go back through the roll and pick out the rest of them, and sure enough, I've got multiple examples of the same die that I've been seeing a marker on, but didn't see characteristics of hub, hub doubling. So that I know that I've been through the roll. And I've been I've seen the coins. Vicky Cardwell. Vicky Cardwell gets this one. Ooh, it's marked up. You got uh, a lot of the, it's like a waxy substance on the coins. It come directly off what do I have there it would come directly off with a small wipe of xylene I'm looking at that little thing on the L Well, it's too small to count, but it looks like it's a minor, minor, minor double die. See a little bar underneath the L there. It's just really small. A 
there's there's really not anything wrong with this coin. It's just got all that little waxy stuff on it that would come directly off of the xylene. And I do recommend xylene for red BU coins, if need be, to wipe it across very lightly, gently. One or two wipes to get the dust and dirt and grime off the coin. And it evaporates very quickly, a lot more quickly than wood grain alcohol or acetone. And it will take all that gunk off the coin. What? Waiting on a ride to get my Jeep. The brakes went out. I hope everything's okay, brother. Of course, a lot of uh, a lot of people from Louisiana, when the brakes go out on their Jeep, they're out in the middle of the swamp. They're fighting the alligators and the copperheads and the cottonmouth snakes just to get out of the swamp. I hope that's not where you are. All right, Vicky Cardwell gets the next coin. Coin number 20. And okay, if you guys hear a low grumbling noise, that's my garage door opening underneath me. As my garage is directly under my office. And somebody is coming or going. Nothing on the obverse there. seeing anything on the reverse these particular coins I don't think have enough value otherwise to bother with the time and energy of the xylene unless you happen to need a 1964 D Lincoln cent in your book Mr. Patat what do we have oh, it's another normal coin Well, let's see here. Not seeing any of the things I'm looking for. I will just keep looking. If it doesn't happen on its own, we'll make it happen. Cajun brother, I hope everything works out for you. Hello, Kickstar. Yeah, Vicky Cardwell again. Keep going through Vicky Cardwell here. And uh, unfortunately, we've not done much good for her yet in this role. A bunch of that little waxy stuff that often comes in these BU rolls. Nothing there. So I'll tell you, before I start this, listen to this. I get my hands really, really dry with good antibacterial soap. I don't like wearing gloves because I can't handle the coins well. So I can handle the coins. Hello, Matting. Vicky Cardwell again. By their edges like I'm supposed to. There we go. There's an RPM for Vicky. So Vicky has one of the RPMs now. Seems like this RPM is the only thing we're going to be catching out of this out of this roll. We're almost halfway through the roll and we've found now four examples of a single RPM. So there's another RPM and one for Vicky. Now we've got three of the five people involved in this role who have an example of this RPM. What do we get next? Vicky Cardwell again. We have another RPM for Vicky and a little fleck of metal sitting on the six. 
This is another one of the same RPM again. Maybe the rest of the roll will be these. So everybody gets a little push. Flip it over and see what we get on the reverse. Probably the same thing as the others. It'll be normal. Matting. How is everybody doing today? It's been a very busy but wonderful day here. Oop, I'll put this over here with the other RPMs. So now, so far, we have five examples of the RPM. We've got two for Mr. Adams. We've got one for Mr. Patat. And we've got two for Miss Cardwell. So. Ah, look at that. Miss Cardwell gets the wrapper. So here's the wrapper. It's going to go with Mr. Miss, Miss Cardwell, Miss Vicki Cardwell. Congratulations, Vicki. Uh, wait, let me write it on here. Just to be sure. There. Got her name written on there, so I know that the wrapper goes with her. All right, next coin. Mr. Adams. Let's see what we pull out of here for Mr. Adams. It's going to be a normal coin. This is the one that's got the little feather next to the end. That's die damage right there. We've proven that because we've seen a few of them now. There won't be anything else on the obverse of this and likely nothing on the rears. Check it here real quick. Been through a number of these now. I've seen this die a few times over again. We know that other than that interesting little feather looking thing next to the N of N, there's nothing else of value on that coin. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn's coin is another normal one. Well, that's kind of a bummer. This one looks a little different from some of the others. This one's got an earlier dice data as it appears. Everything's a little bit sharper. <coughs> I'm sure I've seen this die before, though, in this roll. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's see, what have I got coming up here on the reverse? There's a nice early reverse, too. All right, so Mr. Dunn gets a normal coin. Well, let's take a look at coin number 27. 27 will go to Copper Kingdom. Let's see what Copper Kingdom gets. Not an RPM. Not having quite the luck with this roll. There's, there's your die scratches in front of the face right there. I've seen this one before. Yeah, and the clash. Not having the luck with this roll that we have with our last 1964D roll. But hey, this one's one of those fun rolls. Not losing the bank to it, and it's fun to try to find something nice in them. All right, coin number 28. Bingo, Brian. How are you doing today? Copper Kingdom. Copper Kingdom next coin. And we have an RPM. Yes. An RPM for Mr. Copper Kingdom. There we go. I've been told this is RPM number seven. I'm guessing that's probably what it is because I trust the people who told me that. Not hard to look this one up. I mean, it's a pretty simple RPM. It's a nice north spread. No doubling on the reverse on this, as expected, as we've seen this before. That is number six out of this roll, and Copper Kingdom gets it. So we've got two for Mr. Adams, two for Miss Cardwell, one for Mr. Patet, and one for Copper Kingdom. We need one for Mr. Dunn, and we've got everybody in the roll accounted for. Here's Mr. Patet. 
see what he gets. Well, it's another normal coin, as it appears. I don't know. I think it could be something over on the right side of the mint mark. I'm looking at that little roof coming off the top of the mint mark. And I'm thinking well, that's probably just dye deterioration. Yeah, that's all it is. Dye deterioration. It disappears too easily. I'll take another good look at it under the scope, but I was thinking at first that could be a repunch mint mark from what I saw right there, just like that. Okay, let me move on. What I'm looking for is separation lines on the reverse, especially toward the rim, looking for notches in the corners of the letters. I haven't seen anything on any of these reverses yet. There was some good stuff in there in that auction last night. Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams gets, well, a normal coin. He won a 1964 D Lincoln cent. 1964. Well, the first year of the Kennedy half dollar. That year started just a month after Mr. Kennedy was assassinated. 1964 was in the middle of the Vietnam War. Actually, not too far after the Americans first got involved in the war. 1964, I believe there was a really big earthquake up in uh, Anchorage, Alaska in 1964. Mr. Adams. 1964 was also the last year the United States made coins using 90% silver. Well, for commerce anyway. That was a little hit on the rim. They still make 90% silver dollars for commemoratives. There's a strut through. Let me get that around so we can take a better look at it. That's not damage, I don't think. It looks like a strut through. Some of it's damage and some of it's struck through. Nothing else on this one. My purpose today will be served if I can get Mr. Dunn an RPM. Vicki Cardwell. She already has two of them. Let's see what happens here. Yep, another normal coin. Got someone trying to call me. I guess they don't know I'm online. I will call them back when I'm finished with the video. All right. Normal coin, number 32. Now for number 33. Mr. Dunn. All right, let's see what we get here. Mr. Dunn needs an RPM. Mr. Dunn did not get an RPM on this coin. That reminded me of Faulty Towers, old British TV show. When I said on this coin, John Cleese was the guy who did that show. He had a one of his hotel. He ran a hotel staff. It was a 
a, a bed and breakfast, like an inn, called Faulty Towers. And his butler and room service servant was named Manuel. Manuel didn't speak English. Vicky Cardwell. And Manuel was walking across the room one day. See, there's, there's another one of those little bar L things. It's just not enough to list, though. And he had uh, toast and butter on a tray. He was carrying the tray across the room. And, of course, Cleese was the owner of the, of the inn, so he stops Manuel. He says, Manuel, Manuel. Manuel stops and he says, yes, sir. He says, there's too much butter on, that, on those trays. He's got a couple of trays with him. Manuel says, excuse me, what? He says, there's too much butter on those trays. Manuel looks down and he's got three pats of butter on the tray. He says, oh, no, 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 sir. No, sir, not on those trays. Uno, dos, tres. That was a funny show. Don't have any reveals open right now, sir. I will. See, there's another one of those. That little bar L. Little thing underneath the L. It's just, it's there, but it's just not enough. I will be working toward opening a few more rolls next week. I'm doing three this week. I believe, I don't know for sure. I'll check after I get finished with the broadcast here. I'll check to see if I have any of the 43S's left. I believe I do. I may have filled it up, though. Next will be, Mr. Patat. That's why am I going to put that under the scope? We don't need to look at that closely. We need to look at this closely. There we go. There is another RPM. So Mr. Patat gets another RPM. I believe, yeah, he's already got one. So this is his second one. 19, what I believe is 1964 D number 7. If the uh, opening two rolls things tends to work out, I'll be charging less money per coin than I would for original bank wrap rolls because I can get two rolls less expensively. And generally, what I end up with with two rolls, I either know that they've never been gone through, or I have suspicion they have. If I have suspicion that they have, I will definitely not sell any coins out of those rolls. But for the ones I'm pretty sure that nobody has ever been through, I will offer as an original two grill, not knowing anything about its contents, but the coins will be inexpensive coming out of those. We're talking about a dollar or less per coin. These particular coins in this roll were 50 cents a piece, and people are getting pretty decent RPMs out of them. We only got one person left to share the RPMs with. We'll have everybody who bought into the roll with at least one example of the RPM that came out of the roll. And that's pretty good. Considering 1964 the RPMs in red uncirculated condition are generally worth $5 a piece, if not more, depending on their condition. All right, next one, Mr. Dunn. Let's see what we can do for Mr. Dunn. Not one of the RPMs. This has the clash and the die scratches coming off the face. There's, there's, well, you can barely see the die scratches, but they're there. And then there's the clash. And this one's going to have nothing else on it. I've seen this die at least four or five times already. All right, for Mr. Dunn. Sorry, brother, I'm still looking. Still working on it. Coin number 39. 
Uh, Bingo Brian, if I've got extra spots, I'll get them to you, and I will let you know what I had. Well, I'll be checking right after I get finished with this reveal, but if you had to step away and you get to a point where you can't come back, I'll email it to you if you're not here at that time. And this one's a normal coin on the obverse and on the reverse. Also a normal coin. That's coin number 39. Right now, I'm more concerned about how many of Mr. Dunn's coins I've already pulled and how many he has left. Miss Cardwell. Miss Cardwell gets, yeah, it's a normal coin. We've spread the wealth to everybody but Mr. Dunn so far. Some spots on this one. Will do, Mr. Bingo. All right, Mr. Dunn. Let's see what we can get out of this one. Let's see if we can milk an RPM out of this coin. Bam. No. Nothing. Another normal coin. And get caught with nothing. You guys, make sure you smash the like button on this video if you like it. If you like what I'm doing here, help me out with my channel get YouTube to a point where they actually pay me for doing stuff. Next, Mr. Patat. Mr. Patat gets a little lamination, or is that, no, that's a struck through, or a weight. Looks like a lamination, we follow it through. Well, it's only in that one area. There's a die crack on this one. Running right above the VDB on the shoulder. Something I haven't noticed yet. I have seen a close mint mark, though. So I'm thinking this is just another example of a die that I've passed by before and didn't see anything on it. Didn't notice the die crack over the VDB. All right, there's coin number 42. For Mr. Patet, coin number 43 will go to Mr. Adams. Coin number 43 is a normal coin. That's a fiber laying on the nose. This is not one of the ones that has the damage next to the N. It's not the little minor bar L. Just a normal coin. Number 44. Mr. Dunn. We're running out of chances. Yay! Mr. Dunn gets an RPM. It's got a little bit of that waxy stuff on it, but... It's got a little bit of lamination going on down at the rim. Let's see what else we've got going on with this one. Nothing on the reverse as expected, but Mr. Dunn now has an example of what we believe to be 1964 D, RPM number 7. And so now there have been 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these pulled, and all five people involved in the roll now have an example. Sweet. Mr. Dunn again. Let's see what Mr. Dunn gets this time. I've been wondering where all Mr. Dunn's name chips were. Hiding in the bottom of the bag. Another normal coin. Nothing up my sleeve there. Sorry, Mr. Dunn, another normal coin there. I don't know how many more of your name is in the bag because I haven't been counting cards. Copper Kingdom comes up next. Copper Kingdom will get another RPM. This waxy stuff, don't be afraid of it because it's, for the most part, it's easy to get off the coins. It comes off with, uh, well, I've got a solvent that pulls it off. Copper Kingdom, I'm going to put this coin aside. This is your second example, isn't it? Second example of this RPM out of this roll. Yeah, you got two of them in here. I will show you as an example how this comes off and you've still got a fine coin underneath. Copper Kingdom again. Hey, got you another RPM. This one's a lot cleaner. There you go. It's another RPM number seven. Or what we believe to be RPM number seven. There's no question this one's a nice original roll. You can't really expect any better than that. That's for sure. You can definitely hope for better. You can't expect any better. All right. So, three coins left. Just checking. I got three left. One, two, three. Let me pick this one. Copper Kingdom. Copper Kingdom comes out with a normal coin. It's a little flake of metal sitting in there in the six. Try not to disturb stuff like that so that you get the original little flake of metal that came on the coin out of the roll. There's a little feather next to the end, so we've seen this die before. So just in case you like little conversation pieces like that with little flecks of metal that are stuck to the coin, you at least get it when you get the coin. Some of them end up falling off. But for the most part, I can keep them intact through the hunt. Copper Kingdom again. Not an RPM. Not an RPM. This is one of those ones that has the relatively clean obverse. Earlier die state coin. Everything's pretty sharp and crisp on this. I'm not exactly sure what the rinse is they use now, but I believe the rinse is more like dish soap. I've, I've seen it at Sudsy, and I don't know exactly what it contains or what it is, but this isn't, uh, what I use is not... It's not corrosive. It doesn't stay on the coin. It doesn't leave any residue. It evaporates inside of a second. Mr. Dunn gets the last coin in the roll. This is coin number 50. Let's see what happens. No RPM. Well, Mr. Dunn did get one RPM out of the roll. This is the roll ender, which is why it's a little dirtier. Yeah, a mint wash would be from the minting process. It, they do it before they actually mint the coins. They wash the planchets before they put them in the press to mint the coins. Okay, so 
I'm gonna, I hope Copper Kingdom doesn't mind this, but I'm going to make this coin actually nicer than it was coming out of the roll. And give you guys a little example of how this works. Okay. So we're going to look at the coin again. And just look at this. This area down in here. And this stuff over here. And then I've got this stuff right here. This is scientific grade xylene. And I take the coin. And I take a Q-tip. I fluff up my Q-tip so it's nice and fluffy. Because they roll them a little too tight. Don't use off-brand cotton swabs that have the plastic stick only use q-tip brand they have paper stick paper stick will not scratch the coin this stuff evaporates far faster than moonshine so you want to keep the lid on it all the time and I got a good nice soak going on there it smells kind of like rubbing alcohol and I'm going to rub it over the coin And I'm not using the same part of the Q-tip more than once. It's not going to take everything off, but it will take most of it off. Get the lid back on this. Tight. See, almost all that stuff came off. Now the rest of this is going to evaporate off, but you can see all the grime came off the coin and we still got a nice red coin. Name of the solution is xylene or xylol. Uh, you can get something like this. There we go. You can get something like this at um, a hardware store, but a hardware store is going to give you something that may have additives or other perfumes or something in it. This stuff came from a science company and it's specifically only the chemical. It smells kind of like wood grain alcohol. And there, see now it's all evaporated off the coin. The coin is just a coin now. Nice RPM. You got a little tiny bit of that left over there, but if you remember seeing that before, it was kind of nasty. A little bit of xylene goes a long way. The coin's nice and bright. It's original red. Just in case there's any leftover on there, I don't want it to get into plastic because it will melt plastic. And there we go. Nice clean coin. It's called xylene, X-Y-L-E-N-E, -E, xylene. It does not harm copper, but it will harm you. Stuff's deadly. And it stinks. It smells not like turpentine and not like wood grain alcohol, but it kind of has a, 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 a hint of both. Uh, for this bottle, I've had this bottle for about three years now, and you can see how full it still is. Um, I think I paid $25 for it. It's about the only thing I actually recommend on coins. Um, acetone is not good on coins, and the reason acetone is not good, even if you get pure acetone, is acetone has a tendency to turn your coins purple. Uh, it has a tendency to strip the coin. And when you strip a copper coin, you end up with uh, like the, the bare metal oxidizes immediately. And xylene will take all of the grime, crud, and gross stuff off the surface of the coin, but doesn't affect the color of the copper itself. So 
All that, the, the waxy stuff, I believe, probably comes from counting machines. Like uh, your, your banks and your Fed Reserve system. They have counting machines that count coins. And they, uh, I, I believe they have uh, like a compound of some sort that has a waxy buildup. And that gets inside the chamber, the die chamber, and actually mints into the coins. And we end up with we end up with coins that have, well, it's a little crusty, looks like candle wax. Oops, that's coin number one. So here's all of our coins. These are the ones that were not die varieties. And the ones that were are right here. We have Copper Kingdom, Copper Kingdom, Mr. Dunn, Mr. Patat, Patat. Copper Kingdom again, Ms. Cardwell, Ms. Cardwell, Mr. Adams, Mr. Patat, and Mr. Adams. So all five people involved in the roll got at least one example of this die variety. And everybody but Mr. Dunn got two or more. So there we go. I don't recommend any chemical on coins that are red copper except xylene and xylene should be used very sparingly don't go scrubbing your coins with it don't take a bath with it because uh chuck used it on a coin in a video and it made it cleaner it's not going to clean everything it's not going to take black spots off the coins it's not going to turn brown coins red it will take a red coin with a little bit of waxy buildup on it and it will make that red coin flash a little bit better and it'll take the waxy crap off of it improperly annealed planchets are we talking about uh, like lamination The lamination happens when they're, um, <clears throat> the metal that they use to make coins is folded and folded and folded, kind of like you do a pie crust. And pie crust has little tiny layers. And when it cooks, those layers kind of separate just a little bit. And that's why pie crust is real flaky. Well, that kind of happens with the metals when they create the metal for the coins. They fold it, they fold it, they flatten it, they fold it, they flatten it. They heat it up, they heat it up, and they fold it again. And they do it so many times, you've got a thousand little layers. And those thousand little layers, when they get mashed out into, uh, in, into the coin thickness and then get punched into blanks, that become planchets, that become coins. Sometimes there's impurities between those layers. And if there's an impurity between those layers, those layers aren't going to stick to one another. Given that they're not going to stick to one another, when you slam it with 35,000 pounds of force and... Uh, press a design into the coin sometimes it'll lift one of those layers off and sometimes that layer can go all the way across the coin what you end up with is a split layer sometimes you get uh, split layers off of uh, clad coins and that's because the clad doesn't stick really well because of impurities on one layer or the other hello Sean Craven but on Lincoln sense um, the older ones anyway what you're talking about is a 95 percent copper composition and as those layers get folded in and folded in and folded in, you end up with a little bit of oil or grease or something on one of the layers. And when the coin's minted, it pulls that layer apart, and you end up with what's known as lamination. I hope that's what you're asking for with the improperly annealed planchet. Uh, improper annealing, as it's noticed as a term, is generally used with nickels. And it has to do with how the nickels were... Uh, heated between um, between the time that they're cut and the time that they're put into the press to mint and they turn this weird black color and they're called black beauties and they have a lot of luster yet they're very dark in color but annealed is a process of putting planchets to harden the planchets and get them ready for uh, minting they put them in a in a like a drum, kind of like a, what you would see a cement mixer. They put them in there, and then they heat that. They heat that drum, and that heats the planchets up. And sometimes, if they leave it in there too long, or if they don't do it right, 
they they change colors. But I've not really noticed anything like that specifically with Lincoln Sense. It's mostly nickels that I noticed that on. I don't really have anything else right now. To, I, I'm I'm spent. I just gave all the education I can. Okay, folks. Well, it's dinner time here in North Carolina. I've got a relatively successful roll here. I've got Vicky Cardwell coming out with two RPMs and a smiley face. I've got Mr. Adams coming out with two RPMs. Mr. Protect coming out with two RPMs. Mr. Dunn has one. And Copper Kingdom gets three. So I appreciate everyone coming today. Uh, be back tomorrow where we will open this 1958 D-roll. be tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, just like today. And then Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I will be opening a fresh roll of 1943s Lincoln cents that are in a tube. These are all uncirculated coins. There's 50 coins in the roll. And they're all uncirculated. And that is an original roll. I'm going to check right now for Mr. Bingo Brian to see if I still have positions left in that roll. I'm not sure if I do. I can't remember. getting the sheet out right now I think mama's gonna want me to take her out to dinner and she's probably on there waiting when are you gonna get off that computer I shouldn't have said it that way she's a nice lady let's see Nineteen forty-three S. I do have remaining spots. So, Bingo, you want 10 spots in the 43S roll? I think I can do that for you. I think I do have that. What I'm looking at right now shows that I've sold 36 spots out of the roll. I'll have to check one more place to be sure. Be patient with me for a moment. Everyone else, I definitely appreciate you showing up. I appreciate uh, you joining me in this roll. And... I've got nothing else to add to the show today, except that we do have a show tomorrow. I'll be doing another roll tomorrow. Let me bring up. And right now, I'm just working on answering this question for Mr. Bingo. And trust me, I got a lot of order to this. It's just that I can't find everything right off the bat. Right. you got to have some sort of order to everything when you're sending out over 900 items per month. Okay, 1943S, I have 14 spots remaining, which shows that i got 36 sold. So, Bingo Brian, you will get the 10 spots you want. Uh, Mr. Schacht, it will not come back as a cleaned coin. Everything, every every bit of the residue, well, there isn't any residue with xylene, but it comes straight off the coin. It. Uh, Raymond Lungi. Okay, send me an email. I'll send you my email address here. What I want you to do is I want you to send me an email. Let me know what your PayPal email address is so I can invoice you for the spot, and I'll register you to bid in my auctions as well because that's generally where I do the roll reveal spots is I open them up on Tuesdays when I do my auction. This week we have this 1964 D-roll. We have a 1958 D-roll tomorrow, and then we have a 1943 S-roll coming up on uh, Friday. And next week I'll have three or four rolls. Uh, Wild Bill, two more spots. 
Now I'm getting to a point where I got to start writing things down because, uh, well, I'm getting old before my time. So bingo wants 10. Raymond. Hello, NGEE. Once one. And Wild Bill. Once two. Two additional spots. I think that leaves me with one spot. Grand total of one spot remaining. Because I had 14 when I opened up today. 13 have sold. So, Raymond, make sure that you, uh, okay, Midnight Silver Run, make sure that you uh, send me that email so I can get you in here and get you invoiced for this because I do have to invoice and you do have to pay before I open the roll or the spots will just go to the house. Midnight Silver Run gets the last spot in that roll. Okay, well, Bill, I've got you for two. I've got Raymond Longy for one. I've got Midnight Silver Run for one, and I've got Bingo for ten, and that closes that roll. That's all 50 spots. Uh, Hoover's Corgis and Coin, they were $10 per coin out of a 1943 SBU roll. I will be doing other rolls in the future, so don't become discouraged because you missed one because there will be others. I plan on doing two to four rolls per week ad infinitum until I can't do them anymore or I don't have any rolls to do but I've got uh, a couple of thousand original bank wrap rolls of Lincoln cents and I've got uh, oh at least three or four hundred uh, nice uncirculated rolls of Lincoln's that are the wheat cents that I've never been through I've got a number of them that I have and I've got a number that I haven't but anyway we'll eventually get to a point where We'll uh, be opening rolls every week, at least two or three rolls per week, and I will announce those spots open on Tuesday evening at the end of the auction. Well, I appreciate that, Vicky. Thank you for the nice message. I'm glad you got the wrapper, and I'm glad you got you got a wrapper that's 54 years old from a Federal Reserve Bank. I love that. That's kind of cool. I got a frame full of wrappers. And then you got two of the RPMs. That'll be really nice because you got one to keep in your collection. You got one to use as trade bait. Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. I've got to get to my dog and get to my wife and probably in that order and get out to eat someplace. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m. right here, same channel. I'll put notification out in the Facebook page before the uh, before the event starts. Be well, folks.